What's up, everybody? Hit that subscribe button, grab a seat, and welcome to our third episode of Drake Our Music TV, where you can watch all of the latest interviews and more from the Mississippi Gulf Coast hottest emerging independent artists. Hosted today by me, Leela Moore, Drake Our Music TV aims to shed light on all of the hardest working independent music artists. You can follow us on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter at Drake Our Music Productions. And go visit our website at www.dracomusicproductions.com. That's www.dreko.musicproductions.com to stay in the know on all of the hottest emerging Mississippi Gulf Coast independent music artists. Uh, starting this week off right, we have today Big King Fish of Gulfport, Mississippi. He's an independent music artist and an owner of Gas Films, Great Always Survive. So he is an entrepreneur. Now, um, can you want to tell us a little bit about Gas Films? Okay, so Gas Films, Grace Always Survive, right? I came up with this when I um, I had actually uh, was in the hospital when I came up with this idea. And I was it was maybe like three years ago. Mm -hmm. And I had uh, been in the hospital for a while and I was just thinking like, I don't, I shouldn't let anything stop me. So like, cause I, I feel like my vision is greater than what other people would like to be, or even myself is bigger than me. So when I say greats always survive, even when I'm not here or gone, my piece of history will be remembered forever. Right, that's excellent. All right, you guys, you heard it. Gas, films, great, always survive. Now we at Drake Our Music Productions and Drake Our Music TV would like to thank you, Big King Fish, for having this interview with us today. And we also want to give a shout out to all those out there celebrating Father's Day and Juneteenth week, which started June the 16th to that and goes through the 19th. Giving a special shout out to the Gulfport Citywide Juneteenth Celebration Committee. We did have a good time over the Juneteenth kickoff weekend that took place at the Isaiah Fredericks Community Center in North Gulfport on Martin Luther King Boulevard. If anyone that's listening missed this year's Juneteenth kickoff party, just go to Facebook and follow the Gulfport Citywide Juneteenth Celebration Committee so you won't miss the next annual Juneteenth event. Now, before we get in our interview, we want to just briefly speak about the Juneteenth. What is Juneteenth and why we as Israelites, all of the 12 tribes, a.k.a. African Americans, should honor this special day. Now, many of you have heard of the Emancipation Proclamation that was enacted and enforced through Civil War by the late President Abraham Lincoln to become a national law in the United States. This law declared that all persons held as slaves within the rebellious states or and henceforward shall be made free. This simply means that freedom was granted to enslaved Israelite African Americans and other slaves that were being held in rebellious states. Every year on Juneteenth, well June 19th today, Juneteenth is celebrated to commemorate the emancipation of enslaved people in the United States of America. The holiday was first celebrated in what is now today called Galveston, Texas in the 1860s. In the aftermath of the Civil War, slaves were declared free under the terms of the 1862 Emancipation Proclamation. So this day, today, June 19th, marks the day where many of our Israelite African-American ancestors began the true battle for fighting to be recognized as free men and women. Now, we just wanted to shed some light on that, on some real black history. Now, let's get into this one-on-one -on -one interview with Mr. Big King Fish. Let's get it. All right, now, I am sure that many of your fans want to know right off, uh, what first got you into music? Well, first got me into music is actually my grandfather. When I was about three years old, he he knew how to play the guitar, so he kind of showed me how to play the guitar when I was younger. And not necessarily being into like rapping or so, like I was into the actual instruments. Like I know how to play a couple instruments. Like I was real big on just learning how to read music and learn how to play music okay. since I was about three years old. Okay, all right, all right. Now, you said your grandfather first got you into it, so I guess he's the inspiration behind the music. Oh, that's my next question. You want to uh, go ahead and give a shout out to his name? Uh, rest in peace. Rest in peace, Connie Davis. I mean, he meant his 
my grandpa meant a lot. I didn't even get to spend a lot of time with my grandfather, but the time that I had, it's all great memories. And it's literally one of the main reasons why I keep music so dear to me because it's, it means a lot to me. Yes, yes. Yeah. We got to give thanks to our ancestors who brought music to us. Yeah. Um, that's, that's excellent. Mm -hmm. Now, my next question is, how would you describe the music that you create? Well, what, what genre would you want to... Would you put you put it in? Okay, that that's a great that's a great question because I feel like a the whole thing that I got with my music was with it's with aliens and everything and UFO everybody's like well, why are you going with this alien stuff because UFO to me means unidentifiable flying object now gas films other words for gas everybody kind of knows what that would mean if you get what I mean you know you know you know you don't <laughs> but. What I'm saying is, my music is not to be classified. It's not contemporary. It's basically alternative hip hop. Right. Like okay. it's not. It's not necessarily pop. It's not rock. It's not necessarily hardcore rap. It's not gangster rap. It's just alternative hip hop. All right. All right. Now, what is your creative process like? Like, where does your lyrical content derive from? When you go in and do a writing session, where do you get that? That that drive from? Well, the way I write is kind of like how I do a lot of my creative uh, processes. Like, I usually start with a theme and an idea. Mm -hmm. And then from there, I come up with stories, experiences that I've had, stories from other people, and I kind of just write. It might take me two or three weeks to write one song. Mm -hmm. But because I, I write it, refine it, and it's just... It's real particular. Can't give out too much sauce, but you know what I'm saying. But it's yeah. it's yeah. real meticulous. It's, I'm real meticulous about what I do when I write, cause and to me and my art, everything means something. That's true. That's good because some people rush into the booth and they just yeah. saying some stuff. So that's that's good. It's nothing wrong with that. We take our time and cause it's art. You know, An artist can't just slap it on the, the paper board. They have to go in and take their time and paint it right. So with a music artist, that's the same way. Very nice. All right. So now let's talk about a few of your songs, like what's behind the making of these songs. One in particular is The Wizard off the Moonchild Project, which was released in May of this year. Tell us how you came to creating this song. Well, I created this song because, A, it's like, it was, um, I don't know how I say this, but it, it, it's certain people that, that think of think of me in a certain way because like I'm big on law of attraction and manifestation, like right. and speaking things into existence. And since I've been on that same like wavelength in my brain, and I've been able to do that, I've kind of been able to manifest a lot of stuff in my life, like and I, and with that, people think it's like magic or something. Yeah, but it's not. It's not. I like. I'm just real. I read a lot, so I've yeah. just been trying to enhance my, my brain and, and enhance everything to where stuff like not become easier, but when when you're connected, like mind, body, spirit, and soul, everything right. is on the same the same wave and you and you can feel good, then like you that's where yeah. that's where that's the right. people think it's magic, but it's not. I'm just I've been healed from the past trauma that I've had and it's helped me to make better music. Yeah. So that's where the the wizard comes in because like for a lot of people say my age, I'm a lot wiser than I'm supposed to be. So like a wizard. Here before your time. Yes. Ahead of the time. I hear that a lot. Yeah. And, and of course, one of my favorite artists kind of like, if, if you hear my music, you can kind of tell it's like Wiz Khalifa influenced. Yeah. yeah. So like, I said, little Rick Ross. He sound like a little Rick Rose, little, <laughs> little uh, Bum B, kind of mixed it a little bit. That's yeah. what that's kind of that's the sound I, that I got. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um. Now the next song, I am sure that your fans will want more information on Paper Chaser, which was released October of 2021. Now, what's the structure behind the making of this song? Well. The structure behind making this song, mm -hmm. right? This song actually is older than that because I got uh, Big Beasy to do the remix to it, yeah. and I put him on a second verse. But that song I originally wrote that in 2019, 
Okay. And it didn't do it didn't do much. So like I but that's music. You can really come back to any song at any time. That's so right. Yeah. That's I just right. decided to revisit it and we ended up shooting a music video for it and it turned out it turned out pretty good in my opinion. Yeah. Okay. Now um just tell all your fans and listeners where they can find, download and stream some of your music right now. All right, so that would be you gotta search Big Kingfish. That's all one word, capital B, capital K, capital F, all one word together, mm -hmm. and it's gonna be on YouTube, Apple Music, Spotify, pretty much like any any streaming platform that you look, can listen to is going there. I made I found a way to get it on there. Yeah. Okay. Mainly YouTube is what is where you can really see and really listen. Okay. All right. Now my next question is now. Who would you most like to collaborate with, signed or independent? Does it have? Are the kids be alive or alive or dead? Okay. Now this this is a good question because I got two artists, right? Okay. The first artist I would want to make is somebody that passed away, and his name is Juice World, okay. uh, because I feel like I feel like a lot of the stuff that Juice World went went through is stuff that I went through, and if I would have known him. In the musical sense, mm -hmm. probably could have helped him out in a, a lot in his life. Yeah, that's right. Because he was a he was a young man struggling with some of the stuff that I struggled with. So right. I understand that. Mm -hmm. And right now, I would want to work with Tim's. She's everything. Tim's. Period. Tim's. Okay. Right. <laughs> yeah, Tim's. Now, um, if you could open a show for any artist, who would it be? Oh, uh, Playboy Cardi. Uh oh. Playboy Cardi, his shows are, are crazy and insane, and I think I think all my music would get, I think it would get, uh, it get better received from that crowd. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Now, uh, what is one message that you would give to your fans? Uh, the message I would give is my slogan: "Grace always survive." And when I say that, I, I mean like. You don't have to, it doesn't have to be music, sports, whatever. Be great in whatever you do because greatness does last forever. True. In the history books, they don't talk about the losers. They talk about right. the winners. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, I know that other than music, um, we all have many talents. What would you be doing right now if it wasn't for the music career and other than running a business? Um, if I wasn't doing that, I don't know. Uh, I guess I I probably will be coaching football. I used to play football, and um, I love I love football for the fact that like it can transform a young man's life, and that's really yeah. what it's about. Mm -hmm. It's not just yeah. it's not just about you know what I'm saying yeah. playing games, and yeah. it's about literally helping somebody's life yeah. and transforming their life to a True. better one. And you can do that with sports, so that's sure why can. I like football. Yeah. Yeah, you may want to, um, Gas may want to start a little Little League team. You know, that's a good outlet to reach the youth, too. You know, young yeah. kids out here is just going any direction. and They need more men like, you know, like you. Yeah. Um, now, next question. Where have you performed? What is your favorite and least venue? And do you have any upcoming shows? Well, I performed in New Orleans at uh, Club Istanbul, like maybe three, just going on my fourth time now. Mm -hmm. And uh, I got a show coming up there again, July 16th. Mm -hmm. And I performed in Atlanta before. I had a, um, and I, I performed uh, at a local club in Gulfport, Temptations. That was probably my least favorite because nobody got involved at all. Wow, mm -hmm. that's crazy. But, it's all good. That's I like right. performing to perform, even if it's even if it's one person. Now I'm gonna do That's the same right. as if it's a thousand people there. That's right. Yeah. An audience is still an audience. Yeah. Now, um, how do you feel um, that the internet has impacted the music business? Do you think it's helped the music business or hurt the music business? I feel like it's two ways you can look at it. Mm -hmm. A, it's oversaturated everything. Yep. Mm -hmm. So. True. Everybody can do music nowadays. Yep. So that doesn't mean you have to be talented no more. 
as long as you're more popular, you can get your music heard. If you're popular, you can get heard. Yeah. So that that that's technically a saturation is a bad thing, but in the same like vice versa, that it's actually a good thing. We're not thirty years ago, so it's not so hard to to make music. If you got talent and you got the right team, you can make it. Yeah, that's right. That's very very true. I think uh, internet does have its pros and cons. We got to look at the pros because if you focus on the cons, you know, as long as you handling business. Yeah. With your with your social media and all that there, but if you just just using it for waste, you know. Yeah. Um. Now, what is your favorite song? That's your song that you like to perform the most. Um. That would be what song? That's a hard one. So I, I like all my songs, but right right now it'll probably be uh, Lemon Pepper Wings. Okay. 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 Lemon Purple Wing, that's why uh, it's off of the um that uh Van Gogh Vision project. Mm -hmm. It's like the third song and it's um oh it's my favorite song because it sounds so different. Okay, now tell all the listeners where they can listen to Lemon Pepper Wings at. That's um you can listen to it, Spotify, Apple Music, mm -hmm. YouTube, um it's the, on YouTube you can listen to the whole mixtape or Van Gogh Vision, and then under that link, you'll also have the hyperlink to all the uh, the rest of the places that the music is. So, like, that Lemon Pepper Wings is on under that Van Gogh Vision song. Yeah. Okay, okay. You heard that, guys. Go check that out. Now, um, my next question. What is the most trouble that you have ever gotten into? The most trouble I've ever gotten into? Yeah. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> Let's just say that I was a college football player, and I didn't get to play my last year of football. Uh-oh. What happened? <laughs> got into some trouble. Got into some trouble that, uh, you know, really, I just, yeah. being young and dumb. But I learned my lesson. That's good. If you learned from it and didn't go back yeah. to it, that's that's what matters. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, now, um, what is the best advice that you have ever been given? Um, the best advice I ever was given was... To never give up. Yeah. Right. That is right. Cause I honestly don't. I, I don't know when to give up. Honestly. Yeah. Until until the Lord take me off the earth. Yeah. That's what I tell them. That's the only person can stop me, really. Mm -hmm. Now, um, if you could change anything about the music and arts entertainment industry, if it was your world, Big King Fish world, and you had the power to do that, what would it be? If I could change anything, mm -hmm. music-wise? Yeah, dealing with the music industry, okay. arts and entertainment. I would probably um, try to, like, get get away from the stigma that you only got to do one thing. Like, you got to uh, be yeah. in one genre or, like, one classification. Like, That's right. like, if somebody's great at something and they can do other things, then they can do other things. Like, mm -hmm. you don't have to be stuck in one box. Like, yep. I'm not to be classified in one box. Like you cannot put me in one box. I will. I, I will not be defined by that. That's mm -hmm. right. That's right. That's a good change. We all strive to change the world, and that's that's a really good change right there. Um. Now, my next question is a current topic question about what's going on in the music industry and the news. Now, what do you think about the current situation that's happening with Young Thug? The conspiracy case against him. Do you have any thoughts about this on how the courts are using his song lyrics against him as evidence of his crimes and charges? Well, A, at first I gotta say shout out to Young Thug because mm -hmm. if it wasn't for artists like him, people wouldn't probably ever listen to my type of music. Okay. So like with that being said, when you when you do things that are different, right, and they're not the same as other people and you move differently and you actually like I would say, I would say you, you care more, you get backlash. And the, right. and the type of backlash you get whenever you're doing, you're doing your thing is negative. Mm -hmm. So I don't, I don't think you can, I don't think you should be able to use lyrics again. It's, it's freedom of speech. That's Everybody right. else has their own opinion and their own right. And he can say whatever he want to say. But at the same time, you do have a responsibility as an entertainer and as a 
as a as that of a a role model to be careful about everything you say. That's all I'm saying because people look up to Young Thug like right, same way I do. Mm -hmm. People look up to him. That's right. Yeah, that's my opinion. I just say we all have that freedom of speech, but I kind of, you know, want to heed caution because you got children, you know, looking up to you and they gonna copy everything you do. So you kind of want to be mindful in that sense to say, hey, I got fans and I know they, they love me to the point where if I tell them to do this, they gonna go do it. So, I mean, yeah, we praying for him and we hope, you know, that situation gets resolved in the best of God's interest. Now, my next question is, what's next for you, Big Kingfish? Well, I planned on uh, maybe dropping like maybe a, a little EP on my birthday, mm -hmm. which is on 24, maybe two or three songs. I, I didn't want to. I didn't want to do too much because I didn't want to rush anything. But um, that's where that's right now. What I'm focused on is performing, making more music, and focusing on my business with my my filmmaking. Okay, okay, all right, you guys, you heard it. You heard it here, right here at Draco Music TV, Big King Fish. Now, before we close out, we want to go ahead and give a shout out. Uh, to any family, you got friends, you got sponsors, affiliates, your team behind your scenes. Go ahead and get them shout outs, Big Kingfish. All right, so I'm gonna shout out all my family, everybody that's you know what I'm saying, been there, listen that I, that listen to these songs. That Lauren, stop playing this music. Everybody that got aggravated, it's worth it because it sounds a lot better now. Shout out to everybody in Track Team Entertainment because without them. That my sound wouldn't be how it is now today, and those those are my brothers. So like, it's more than just music. So shout out to everybody that is positively influenced me in my life to help me to become the best man and musician that I can be. All right, you guys heard it here first. Now tell everybody who hosts the hottest independent music artist interview on the Mississippi Gulf Coast, Big King Fish. That would be. Draco Go Music, Draco music <laughs> TV Productions. I just didn't want to say it. Right. I'm going to say it again. Draco, Draco Music TV Productions. All right, all right, all right. All right, thank you all for watching this week's episode, Interview with Big King Fish. Stay tuned next week for next week's episode, Interview with another one of the Mississippi Gulf Coast Emerging Music Independent Artists. Uh, we want to give a thanks for everybody watching. Please hit that subscribe button and leave a comment and tell us what you thought about today's show. Uh, we want to give a special thanks to all our affiliates and sponsors. Shout out to Vinny Beats, Afton Shows, Track Team Entertainment Company, and all those supporting Draco Music TV, Draco Music Productions, and Truth Music Entertainment. Thank you, and we are out.